So this video today is going to focus on acceleration, which is part of our third learning target, distinguishing between speed, velocity, and acceleration. So the first thing I need you to do is to get out your green unit organizer and in slot 25, write acceleration, notes, and IP, and it's going to be worth 10 points. Then I need you to find this page in your binder labeled Acceleration Notes and label it 26A. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity or speed over a period of time. And acceleration always has a specific direction. There are two types of acceleration, positive and negative. So our positive acceleration is when an object is speeding up. An example that I'm sure you're all familiar with is when a car is merging onto the highway. So I know on my way home, when I'm trying to get on 380, I need to speed up really quickly. So I'm changing my initial speed, which is around 30 miles an hour, to my final speed, which is about 70 miles an hour. I'm accelerating because I need to go faster to get on the highway. Now negative acceleration is when an object slows down. So just so you know, this is also called deceleration. And negative acceleration will always be a negative number, just like positive acceleration is always going to be a positive number. So an example of negative acceleration I'm sure you're all familiar with is when a car is coming up to a stop sign. So by law, you should stop at a stop sign. So you would be going from 30 miles an hour, your initial velocity or speed, to zero miles an hour because you shouldn't come to a full and complete stop. Now, of course, because we're in physics, we're going to be calculating acceleration. And to do that, we're going to be using an acceleration triangle. We're going to have acceleration, change in velocity, and change in time. So again, A stands for acceleration and units that we're going to see this in is in meters per second squared or another way of saying that is meters per second per second. Delta V is our change in velocity or Vf, V little f minus V little i. Now V little f is equal to your final velocity or speed. while v little i is equal to your initial velocity or starting speed. Delta t stands for our change in time. So say we need to solve for acceleration. We're going to cover up the a and we're left with the change in velocity, so we're going to be we're going to be, need to be given final velocity and initial velocity, and we're also going to be given time. So the equation we're going to use is acceleration is equal. We're left with delta v over so we're dividing by t, so the change in velocity divided by the change in time. How we're going to write this out on our problems is final velocity minus initial velocity over the change in time. Say we need to solve for velocity, we're going to cover up the v, and the variables we would need to be given are acceleration and time. So the equation we're going to use is our change in velocity 
is equal to acceleration times time. Because because a and t are next to each other, we're going to multiply them. The last variable we would ever need to solve for is time. So we're going to cover that up on our formula triangle. So the variables we would need to be given is change in velocity and acceleration. Now because it's change in velocity, we're going to need to be given final velocity and initial velocity. And then we're also going to be need to give an acceleration. Now with t covered up, so our change in time would be equal to delta v, change in velocity, over acceleration. Or final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the acceleration. Now turn the page over and let's do some guided practice. A lizard accelerates from 2 meters per second to 10 meters per second in four seconds. What is the lizard's average acceleration? So remember, anytime we do a problem, we're gonna read it out loud the first time. Now when we read it the second time, we're gonna identify our variables. So I'm looking for acceleration, which is A. I see that I'm given a time, four seconds, but I also see that I'm given two velocities. One's gonna be final, one's gonna be initial. initial. So I need to figure out which one's which. So if I'm going from 2 meters per second to 10 meters per second, I'm starting out at 2 meters per second, and I'm going to final. It's kind of like giving a gift. If you're giving a gift to someone, they're the second or final person to receive it. So because I'm looking for acceleration, I'm going to go back to my notes and look for the equation I'm going to use, and it's going to be this one. So I'm going to write down A, acceleration, is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. I've identified that 10 meters per second is my final velocity, 2 meters per second is my initial, it's going to be over 4 seconds. 10 minus 2 is 8 meters per second, divided by four seconds, and that's gonna equal two meters per second per second, or we can say two meters per second squared. A roller coaster car rapidly picks up speed as it rolls down a slope. As it starts down the slope, its speed is four meters per second. But three seconds later, at the bottom of the slope, its speed is 22 meters per second. What is its average acceleration? So after reading that again, I know that I'm looking for acceleration. I see that I'm given a time in three seconds, but I'm given two velocities. I need to figure out which one's my final and which one's my initial. Well, in the problem it says, as it starts down the slope, its speed is four meters per second. Because it's saying it's when it starts or when it's beginning, I can assume that 4 meters per second is my initial velocity. And then in the, as we read through the problem more, when it says at the bottom of the slope, it's 22 meters per second, that's my final velocity. So if I'm looking for acceleration, my formula is going to be acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So 22 meters per second minus 4 meters per second over 3 seconds. 22 minus 4 is 18 meters per second over 3 seconds is equal to 6 meters per second per second or 6 meters per second squared. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, what is the second per second? This means that for every second the roller coaster was going down the slope, it was increasing its speed by 6 meters per second. The third problem I'm going to do with you as well, and then for number four, you're going to do on your own. A car is coming up to a red light. It was originally going 35 miles per hour and comes to a complete stop. And we're going to add in in five seconds. What is the car's acceleration? 
I'm looking for acceleration, which is A. I'm given a time in five seconds. And it says it was originally going 35 miles an hour and comes to a complete stop. So if it was originally going 35 miles an hour, that means that's our initial velocity, and it's coming to a complete stop. We need to read into this problem a little bit. This is actually our final velocity, and it's equal to zero. So if I'm looking for acceleration, I'm going to have A is equal to VF minus VI over T. My final velocity, because I've come to a complete stop, stop is zero, minus 35 miles per hour equal, I'm sorry, over five seconds. So it'll be negative 35 miles per hour over five seconds. And it's going to equal negative seven miles per hour per second. But wait a minute, you might be saying, don't our time units have to match? Most of the time, yes. But in this case, they don't have to. What this is telling us is that for every second that the car is slowing down, it's slowing down by 7 miles per hour. What I want you to do is try number 4 on your own. Because of the hole punching, you'll see that this number has been cut off, so make a note of it in your binder.